Hey guys, I'm making a video today to respond to the massive amount of criticism I've had over my North Korea vlogs. I don't know if you've seen, but I'm all over the press with accusations that I'm being paid by the North Korean government as a tool for propaganda. And uh, although that makes great headlines, there's no truth in that whatsoever. I'm not being paid by the North Korean government. And uh, actually, I, I want to make a statement now. I do not agree with the North Korean ideologies, but I do care for and love the people there. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name's Louis. I travel the world having fun adventures and I share those with my audience. I've been to developed countries, developing countries with a range of political problems and social justice issues. Uh, two of my favourite cities, Cape Town and Rio, have the biggest wealth disparity in the world. But I am looking for the beautiful, positive things. Uh, I want to connect with local people, learn about the culture and the country. I am not a investigative journalist, I don't really do political commentary and there are other places on the internet you can go to find those kind of things. So this trip to North Korea, as many of my trips, I went on as a tourist and we went on an organised tour, so the same kind of tour anyone going there as a tourist would experience and as much as we can be sceptical about how much was real and how much was staged, that is what I experienced and I can only share with you guys what I experienced so that's what I did on my videos. The assumption I made, which may have been wrong of me, was that people watching my North Korea vlogs would have already had a broader perspective on North Korea. They would have seen documentaries, they would have seen news articles uh, as I have and I want to reassure you that I do know what's going on out there. Uh, I'm not being naive to it all um, and maybe I should have at the beginning of each vlog, encourage people to go and do their own research and find out all that they can about North Korea. So I want to explain how I ended up going on the trip now. My friend Lane posted on Facebook that he was going or wanted to go, so I contacted him and found out that he was going with an organisation that were running their third annual surf school. So I asked if I could join the team and come along. So the guy organising these trips has been visiting North Korea for 17 years, doing humanitarian relief work. He doesn't work for the government, but he has been building a relationship with the government and with the people there. And I don't want to jeopardise any of the work that he's done with the content I've been creating. So Philip DeFranco, he's a popular YouTuber and he made a video about this unfolding drama. He criticised me with an analogy about being taken on a tour around a big mansion knowing that there's rooms with murder and torture going on in them but only being shown to the rooms like the nice swimming pool and the kitchen and the games room and then leaving that mansion just talking about those things. My only question to that is what about the people in the house that are in those rooms, in the nicer rooms? I think the only way to make a difference is to connect with those people and show them love and maybe uh, that will impact the entire household. So if that means surfing or going on these tours, uh, then I'm really keen to do that. And I'm, the only thing that's sad is that I can't show you all of the relationships that I've built and the conversations I've had off camera, which I think is something I always struggle with with my vlogs. In Pyongyang, the capital, we went to a water park and we were surfing in the wave pool there. And there was this one moment where I looked around and there were eight different nations represented. There was people from Sweden, Switzerland, Canada, the US, the UK, North Korea, um, Russia, I think there was another one, Finland. Okay, and the Russian guy was actually just at the water park and he was from the embassy, the Russian embassy. And one of the North Korean tour guys turned to us and said, um, surfing brings peace. And I think that was a very strong message and I, I think it really does. I really, th really think it, you know, as, a, as you've seen with the Olympics, a lot of sporting activities, I don't know if you saw the selfie of the North and South Korean gymnasts uh, with a peace sign that I'll show you here. Like for me, uh, those things break down barriers. And I think that was the whole purpose of us being able to connect with people out there. So I'll leave you with this final thought. A North Korean business specialist, Felix Apt said, if you have no presence in the country, you cannot influence anything for the better. And I think the future of our relationship, like our, the international community's relationship with North Korea is fully dependent on how well we know them. And the intention of this trip was to go out and get to know them better. And I'm happy to say I made some friends out there and I'm really looking forward to going out to visit them again.